I hear you're getting married. It's unbelievable that my big sister with a plain face is getting married. <laughs> Are you sure you're not falling for some marriage scam or something? <laughs> Sadie, how did you manage to contact me? I blocked you. Getting a new number is easy peasy. I'll do anything to insult you. <laughs> You're in no position to run away from me, especially when you're not as pretty as I am. <laughs> when it comes to your persistence, there's probably no one who can surpass you. But how do you even know I'm getting married? It's kind of scary. I tailed you, obviously. What else could it be? <laughs> what the? You're a stalker. I could report you. Ah, isn't it a bit harsh to call a family member a stalker? Even if you report me, there's no evidence. Mm -hmm. How about catching me in the act? You're not my family anymore. We cut ties years ago. Don't think of me as your sister. It's creepy. Wait, was that for real? That's hilarious. <laughs> I got fed up with being called a plain face by you and our parents and having lies about me spread on the internet. It was the truth after all. <laughs> I was seriously annoyed by the defamation claims. Of course, I had to deal with the whole world thinking I was bullying my sister because of your made-up lies. You marched into my workplace with fake tears and makeup of bruises to deceive everyone. Oh, that. <laughs> if people fall for that level of deception, they're all idiots. Everyone trusts cute me more than plain Jane like you. <laughs> And because of your dramatic scene in the lobby yelling if the company would keep ignoring the criminal like me, the business partner witnessed it and our deal was cancelled. Thanks to you, I had to take responsibility and resign voluntarily. You totally messed up my life. Wow, you had a rough time, huh? <laughs> Serves you right. That's why you should be held accountable. Why should I get sued just because I told a little white lie? It makes no sense. Well, it's definitely defamation. It's not just stalking. There are plenty of things you owe me for. Like what? If you're going to say that, you should make amends too. Thanks to you, our parents and I are all broke and we faced social ostracism. You act pretty boldly for someone with a face like a blank canvas. It's your own doing. If it pisses you off so much, you should have thought of the consequences before. Don't act all high and mighty, plain Jane. You keep calling me plain, but you know, both of us have green eyes, right? I have slightly bigger eyes and longer eyelashes. You know, our neighbors and kids from school used to say that we looked just alike. But dad and mom used to say you were a blank face, but I was a doll. They sometimes mixed us up. I don't remember that at all. Anyway, I'm a perfect beauty and a former model. I'm not like my plain Jane sister. Whatever you say. What's with the tone? Seriously, it's so annoying that you get to marry such a hot guy. You get to be happy leaving me a pretty doll behind. I can't stand it. I don't get why you're so worked up, and I don't think it concerns you at all. As punishment, hand your fiancé over to me. What nonsense. And what do you mean, punishment? You sued your family, took our money, and isolated us from society. I told you. It's your fault. No, I don't see it that way. If he won't give in, I'll snatch him away like I did in high school. Stop it. I'm traumatized by that. I won't let you do it again, and I won't allow him to get in touch with you. I can't let you ruin my happiness ever again. Listen. Blake, it's too late for that now. <laughs> His name is Benjamin, right? Your wedding is next Sunday, isn't it? How do you know that? I told you I stalked you. I've overheard you talking. <laughs> oh, God. The wedding is mine now. <laughs> I mean, isn't it better for him to marry me than play Jane? Just stay out of our lives, please. Oh, me no understand. <laughs> Doesn't that idiot sister of mine understand the meaning of cutting ties? Darn it. Oh, excuse me. I got taken over by my trauma and anger for a moment. I'm Blake Raid, 
28 years old. Just recently, I received a message from my sister Sadie, whom I thought I had severed ties with. And what's more, she claimed she's been following me since last month and knows that I have a fiancé. I'm strangely impressed by her persistence. If she dislikes me, she should just leave me alone. I don't get why she's chasing me like this. During my school days, I had already experienced that any man she set her eye on would easily fall for her charms. I believe that my fiancé, Benjamin, who cherishes me, won't fall for her seduction. But because it's her, I'm sure she'll try all sorts of tricks. Not wanting to fall into her traps again, I've come up with a plan. I'm with your fiancé in a hotel room on your wedding day. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? My fiancé is... Of course, it's Benjamin. <laughs> Surprised? But oh well, right? I mean, I'm much prettier. <laughs> no way, you're kidding, right? Yay! Perfectly successful snatch! Woohoo! <laughs> I was so excited today, arriving at the venue an hour and a half earlier than planned. So, I'd like to hear about your current feelings after I successfully stole the groom. How do you feel? <laughs> I can't believe it. Is it true? Well, it sounds like quite a shock. <laughs> this is a live update reporting from the scene. Come on, go crazier and show more devastation. How about a nice apology from the plain Jane for trying to get ahead of me? But even if you did beg me, I won't let Benjamin go. <laughs> Don't mess with me. You aren't satisfied with what you did in high school and now you want to steal my happiness again? Of course! You pushed your family into hell first, so don't expect to be happy all by yourself. I already told you the other day, but you're the one who went out of the line first. That was outright defamation. Don't you think it's strange to blame me while ignoring what you did to me? Nope, not at all. <laughs> you're too narrow-minded, big sister. Don't play the victim just because some nasty rumors were spread about you. You'll be our toy to play with forever. <laughs> Old habits die hard, huh? More importantly, listen. Benjamin is amazing. He can't let go of me and I don't know what to do. Stop talking. I don't want to hear it. He can't stop kissing me and whisper sweet words into my ear. Oh my god. I'm so loved. That's enough of the vulgar talk. It's embarrassing. Oh, come on. How can you be embarrassed by that? You're such a late bloomer. <laughs> no wonder he's easily swayed. You were exactly the same in high school. I can't forget the time you sent me a message saying I had fun with your boyfriend along with a picture. I've never seen such a nauseating image. Nauseating? You're so weak. <laughs> that guy was easy too. <laughs> He fell for my subtle advance way too easily. I was actually glad to find out that he was a loser that would fall for you. But it left a scar in my heart that will never heal. If you were glad about it, you should be grateful to me for taking him away. Why are you to say that? Back then and now, you've only thought about getting in the way of my happiness. You're a wicked woman who takes pleasure in seeing me upset. Wicked! We've had enough of your self-introduction. <laughs> How dare plain Jane like you think you can be happier than me? The grudges of those who have been dragged into hell are terrifying, you know? You just don't want to admit that it was all your fault, huh? I'll keep haunting you from now on. Revenge goes on forever, you know? Be prepared. How much more do you want to torment me? Just leave me alone. You'd be happier if you stopped seeking revenge and forgot about me too, you know. Me no understand. Me no listen. Ugh, you did the same the other day. Quit pretending to be an alien. Me don't know. Me no understand. Knock it off. Block, block. <laughs> a bride without a groom, how pathetic. <laughs> I'd die of embarrassment if it were me. <laughs> I'm with Benjamin in a chapel right now. Wait, what are you talking about? Have you gone crazy from the shock? <laughs> He's with me in a hotel room. If you keep insisting, should I send more photos? <laughs> There's no need to confirm with photos. He's next to me right now, reading this conversation. 
don't talk nonsense. Mm -hmm. So who's the guy with me? Are you trying to pass it off as a doppelganger? <laughs> it's more realistic. That is his twin brother, Dylan. He's also my stalker. His twin? Wait, did you just mention stalker? Well, they're estranged. But somehow he found out that Benjamin had a fiancé. I can't believe it. Even though he has a fiancé himself, he's been pursuing me, wanting me to be his second wife. It's been so stressful that I I'm at my wit's end. But now, he's with you. You two are perfect for each other. You're making that up, right? I can't believe that you would be stalked. It's the truth. He somehow found out where I worked and lived. And he would show up every day, offering me roses and being a huge annoyance. That sounds so fake. <laughs> roses are such a cliche. Something plain Jane like you would come up with. Even when Benjamin and I went to the police together, they couldn't do anything because there was no physical harm. It's been so frustrating. Sure, sure. I've had enough of the I'm so popular talk. <laughs> so what you said about Benjamin being with you is a lie, right? You sounded pretty panicked earlier. <laughs> yeah, hearing you say snatch triggered my traumas and I panicked. See? I knew it. Serves you right. <laughs> But I still believed he would never do something like that. So as soon as he arrived, I showed him our chat and it turned out just as I suspected. Huh? It seems like he was going through something similar to me. He received a message from Dylan saying, My boo-boo Blake's taken. Your wedding's cancelled now. Along with a picture of you guys having fun. Really? Sending my picture without permission? What's wrong with him? What's wrong? Isn't it the same thing you did? He got scared for a moment, but he quickly realized it was you in the photo. So, is it true that this guy I'm with is your stalker? Does that mean I was mistaken for you by him? That seems to be the case. Being mistaken for plain Jane is impossible. I'm a pretty doll, you know. You keep calling me plain Jane, but look in the mirror. We look exactly the same, you know. How do we look the same? Because we're identical twins. The length of our eyelashes is different. Besides, I told him I'm your little sister. So why? Wasn't he listening to me at all? He only hears what he wants to. He reminds me of someone. Anyway, thanks for helping me get away from that stalker. Ew, gross. I was after Benjamin. Marrying a stalker is a total nightmare. It's too early to freak out, you know. You're in for a bigger chaos ahead. What? What more could happen? Well, Dylan's getting married today. Huh? It was a surprise that they picked the same day as us. <laughs> well, it's at a different venue, though. I don't get it. In short, he abandoned his bride and is having fun with you. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. As expected, you two are the same kind of trash. <laughs> you guys must have been drawn to each other because you're similar, huh? I'm glad that you hit it off. <laughs> Benjamin's relieved that he had cut ties with his crappy brother. Stop blabbering about unimportant things and help us. After all, it's your fault, you know. Why should I help losers like you? Sort it out yourself. We're twins, aren't we? You're supposed to help your other half. You haven't been my other half for quite a while now. Ugh, you're useless. Then, ask Benjamin. He can clean up after his own brother, right? I'm sure he would do it unlike you, heartless one. He cut ties with Dylan, so he won't. Why? He got fed up with being treated as the inferior sibling, just like me. Dylan was the favorite and doted on. As evidence, their parents are naturally attending his wedding. Neither of you are any help at all. Oh no. What's wrong? Dylan's phone is getting bombarded with calls. Oh my god, it's a video call. What's going on? Are we busted already? Well, I mean, it's no wonder. You did disrupt a significant event. <laughs> His bride must be furious. Oh no, he answered the phone. She looks pissed off and is yelling at him. Help me. Seriously? That's a masterpiece comedy. <laughs> She's asking him to tell her where we are, or she'll pull out Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon on us. I heard from Benjamin that she has a black belt in kung fu and is quite a fearsome character. 
I've heard the name of a technique somewhere. Oh, it's a movie. It's going to be fierce. Why are you telling me this now? He caved under her flaming anger and gave up his location. She's on her way with the whole family. Wait, he just locked himself in the bathroom. Oh, I remember hearing that her parents were formal professional kung fu fighters too. They'll probably punish you in a powerful and interesting way. So would you mind taking pictures of that too? <laughs> the scene of you guys getting punished. You're good at taking pictures, right? No! What's going to happen to us? I'm scared, Blake. Help me. I'll apologize for everything I've done in the past. There's no reason for me to help you. Actually, it's all Dylan's fault for stalking you. Do something. This is just a misunderstanding, Boo-Boo. I believed Sadie was you. Ew. Oh, you must have done this intentionally. Were you testing my love for you? I was a little off this time, but I truly love you. She acted all on her own. I have nothing to do with it. You're supposed to be my second wife, yet you're saying you have nothing to do with it. I don't remember becoming your mistress. You have a bride. Don't say such foolish things. It's just gross when you talk about me and love in the same sentence. Don't get me wrong, I love her, but I love you too, boo-boo. Stop calling me that, it's disgusting. It just sounds so sweet, you know. Don't get so mad. Next time I'll have a wedding with you. I'm going to lose my temper soon, you know. So don't get mad. <laughs> but you're still cute, being upset. Hey, why are you flirting with each other and ignoring me? I'm way prettier. We're not flirting, it's gross. You guys do it with each other. But I mean, I'm definitely way more attractive, right? Who cares about a messed up girl like you? You played with my innocence. What's so innocent about someone who's cheating, you jerk? I totally agree. Seriously, what's so good about playing Jane? It's like night and day between me, the charming doll, and her. You mean a cursed doll, right? Bringing such trouble. Don't think you can get away with it. What? You're the one causing trouble. How could you fool around with me when you have a fiancé? It's your fault for making an advance on me in the first place. I don't like you. I'm in love with my boo-boo. What did you say? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but shouldn't you guys be worried about something more important? What do you mean? I have a feeling the execution is approaching. Wait, I hear yelling from somewhere. They're shouting, asking where the cheater and the seductress are. I hope they won't find us. Oh no, we're busted. They're pounding on our door. Why? We've only been communicating on what's up. How would I know? You put them up to this, didn't you? You sneaky, useless plain Jane. There's no way. <laughs> I have no connection with his fiance. It must be a female intuition thing. True. She's always had sharp instincts. She relied on it to anticipate her rival's next moves and secure victories. What? So we are... What are we going to do? We're seriously in a tight spot. Blake, please help. I'll pay you anything. My condolences. Well, I'll at least come and identify your body. Anyway, we have to go to the wedding reception now. Bye. Hey, wait. Don't block us. Blake. Don't leave me behind. Boo-boo. Succumbing to the angry shouting coming from outside of the room, Dylan reluctantly opened the door. His bride, wearing a terrifying expression along with her parents, stormed in and as it's been said, meted out a punishment to the weeping couple. As for the details of their punishment, I don't have information on that but it was described as a parade of fear unlike any other in this world or something along those lines. Subsequently, the two of them were hit with a cancellation fee from the wedding venue and a compensation payment from the bride. My parents reportedly begged for a more amicable resolution, but the bride curtly dismissed them, stating that they, who overindulged their child, had no right to complain. Since then, the two of them have been working tirelessly to pay off their debts, enduring tough treatments from their unpleasant boss and struggling with exhaustion. On the other hand, Benjamin and I had a beautiful wedding and are now living a happy newlywed life. Having severed ties with troublesome siblings, we're both feeling content and lighthearted. Hey, what's with this disgusting lunch? 
It's so bad, I can't even eat it. What are you trying to do for eating your husband something so salty? I'm sorry, son. I've got a stuffy nose since this morning, so I couldn't even taste the food. I have a sore throat and my fever is rising. I packed your lunch in a daze. You've got to be kidding me. You gave me such a half-hearted lunchbox. I did my best to make it, you know. Listen, hun, do you mind if I take it easy today? I think if I lie down for a while, my fever will come down. Are you serious? The wife sleeps at home while the husband works? Do you think such a thing is allowed? Of course not. But I'm really sick. I can't do the cleaning or laundry today. I can't even cook anymore. Can you just eat out somewhere tonight? Don't make excuses. Being a full-time housewife means nailing all the household chores, no matter how unwell you feel. Thanks to me, you're able to maintain your lifestyle. You've got some nerve saying you want to just laze around and stay in bed. Laze around? I'm really suffering from a fever. If I can rest today, I promise I'll make it up to you tomorrow. So can I take it easy today? Don't you understand when I say no? I won't allow you to slack while I'm working. Listen, no matter how high your fever is, don't you dare skip out on your responsibilities. No way. Don't sleep. Don't rest. Do your chores. Remember, this is the order from your husband. As your mother-in-law, I can't turn a blind eye anymore. What a selfish wife you are. Thanks to Neil, you're able to make a living. You should put more effort into being a dedicated full-time housewife. Um, Erin, it's been a while. Why do you sound so upset? Because of you. How can you be so oblivious, you incompetent wife? Excuse me? I don't want to be a nagging mother-in-law. That's why I refrained from contacting you as much as possible. I've been quietly watching over you guys for a long time, but you've been getting carried away more and more since you married my son. I've reached my limit with your lack of discipline. What do you mean? I've been getting an earful from Neil about your lousy housekeeping. You can't even manage to do basic cleaning and laundry. I hear you also cut corners with cooking. Me? The worst is today's lunch. I heard you didn't even bother cooking and gave him instant noodles. This is absolutely unacceptable as a wife. Wait a minute. I've never done such a thing. I always put my best effort into keeping the house. Even today, I packed a proper lunchbox. Though it was a flop. That's because I'm sick and I usually make it well. I never cut corners with cooking. I've heard contradicting stories from Neil himself. He said you're always being lazy. I heard today you're lounging around the house all day. No way. You don't know your place. A housewife should always respect her husband. He's the reason you are able to make a living. If you can't grasp that, you need some lessons in being a proper wife from me. You don't listen to anything I say. You only believe what Neil tells you. Okay, if that's what you want, then I'm fine with that. I'll take your lessons or whatever you want. Seriously? What's with that defiant attitude? You're so audacious. I like you to wait until tomorrow, though. I just took my temperature and it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's getting hard to even type here. My head feels fuzzy. Can I take a rest now? What? Over 100 degrees Fahrenheit? OMG, are you that sick? Why didn't you say so sooner? Didn't Neil tell you? The reason I'm lazing around is because I'm unwell. No. Even so, I tried my best to make his lunch. He said it was too salty, but he ended up having instant noodles of all things. I wonder if he threw away my lunch. You're joking, right? You prepared his lunch when you were in such bad shape. He didn't mention that to me said you didn't even make it. That was why he bought instant noodles at a convenience store. It sounds like you've heard many stories adapted by him. Sorry, but I don't have the capacity to defend myself at the moment. I'm really drained, so please let me get back to you later. Don't worry about it. The most important thing right now is to take care of yourself. What's up with Neil? This is totally different from what I heard. Um, Carrie... If there's anything I can do for you, you let me know, okay? Neil's at work, so you can rely on me. Call cancelled. Call cancelled. 
Honey, let me in the house. What's wrong with you kicking me out of the house all of a sudden? Did I bother you in my sleep? Your cough was annoying me all night. It's the middle of the night and you're making all that noise. You were keeping me awake. I'm sorry, I can't help it. If you can't be quiet, stay outside. No matter how loud you cough, it won't bother anyone there. No, don't tell me you want me to stay out all night. Not feeling well, okay? I have a high fever. Then you have more reasons to stay out and bring the fever down. It's perfectly cold, so your body will cool down just fine. You're kidding me. I have work tomorrow. I have an important meeting, so I definitely can't take the day off. I wouldn't want to catch a cold from you in case. For the sake of my health, you should stay out for the night. I can't believe you're kicking me out of the house with such a high fever. You're not even concerned about me. You're awful. Never mind the fever. I noticed that you've done the usual housework when I got home. You even made dinner. I bet you were just looking for an excuse to slack off. What the heck? Oh, shoot. It's already late because of you. Well, I'm going to sleep now. I've got an early start tomorrow. Make sure you stay out all night and bring the fever down. Honey, where the heck are you? You better be back home now. Um... I woke up so early just for you this morning, darn it. I was going to let you in, but you disappeared. Because of you, I had to get my breakfast at a fast food place. Is that the first thing you say after locking your wife out overnight? You don't worry about my well-being or apologize for what you did. Why would I apologize to you? Instead, you're the one who should be apologizing. You interrupted my sleep with your noisy cough. And you disappeared this morning without making breakfast or lunch. What the heck are you talking about? You should be thanking me too. I'm sure you're feeling better now that I've kicked you out. Your fever's gone down, right? Don't slack off on the housework anymore, you lazy wife. You're not going to have a wife soon. You're right. Carrie won't be your wife. I took her to see a divorce lawyer. Now please, leave her alone. What do you mean? Who the heck is this, anyway? Is this her friend acting all heroic? I'm her mother-in-law and your mother. Neil, what on earth have you been doing to carry, you idiot? OMG! Are you really my mom? Ugh, I've been furious since last night. How could you throw someone out in the middle of the night with a fever of 100 degrees? How could you be such a a-hole? I don't remember raising you to be like that. Wait, wait. Why are you texting me? This is Carrie's phone. I rescued her last night. She called me out of the blue. She mumbled, please help me, and then the call went dead. I rushed there in panic and found her passed out outside. I almost had a heart attack. Oh, Jesus. The door was locked. I also got to see her chat history with you. It gave me a pretty good idea of what happened, so I rushed her to the emergency myself right away. The doctor put her on an IV drip all night, and she was discharged this morning. Then we went to the lawyer I know and asked him to prepare the divorce papers. Why did you suggest such a thing to her? I appreciate your coming all the way out here in the middle of the night for my wife, but why do you want us to divorce? Because I believe it's in her best interest. I'm doing nothing wrong. For her? Oh, it's like teaching her a lesson, isn't it? You're trying to teach her to appreciate me by daring her to divorce me. That's my mom. Keep up the good work and educate her more. She's the worst wife ever. She can't take care of herself or the housework. What in the world are you talking about? What part of her is the worst wife ever? All the housework is done perfectly. And she's been working 365 days a year without a break. On the contrary, it's amazing she hasn't gotten sick. Um, mom? I want her to get a divorce in order to free herself from you. I believed your every word, so I gave you a contact for a divorce lawyer before, remember? I told you to consult with him so that he could file it any time. I never thought I'd use it like this. Come on, Mom. What's up with you? Are you mad at me or something? I'm beyond mad, and I'm disgusted by you. How dare you lie to me all this time? What did you mean by a useless wife who couldn't even do the chores? Carrie told me everything, and it's totally different. Uh-oh. I was so worried about her yesterday that I, I ended up checking on her at home. 
While suffering from a high fever, she was desperately doing the chores. I took over from her. Seriously? As a fellow woman and wife, I can't forgive what you've done. You abused your hard-working wife and lied to your mother. What the heck were you trying to get out of this? Calm down, Mom. This is all a misunderstanding. I was doing it for her sake. Yeah, right. I have a lot of respect for you, Mom. You always do your best to take care of the family. You're my ideal image of mother and wife. I wanted Carrie to be like you, so I was intentionally strict with her. I thought it would improve her housekeeping skills. You don't have to do that. She's already perfect. I could tell just by coming over yesterday. She'd be responsible in her daily life. No, she's a terrible cook. Not as good as you. My favorite fried chicken is especially disgusting. I told her to make it as good as yours, but she couldn't do it at all. Oh, you liked my fried chicken so much. Then why didn't you tell me that? That's a takeaway from a restaurant near my house. You're kidding. A takeaway? You didn't even make that? No, but at first I was very creative in my cooking. One day when I was sick, I gave you the fried chicken from there. Then you devoured it with even more enthusiasm than mine. You said I love it, so I served you the same every time since then. What the heck? I just refried it quickly to heat it up before dinner. I didn't make it at all. The meatloaf and curry you like are all takeout from the neighborhood, you know. Seriously? I realize that no matter how much time and effort I put into cooking, whether my kids like it or not is another thing. So I gave up being the perfect housewife. Housework is more like a series of compromises. Carrie's food is all amazing, except for the fried chicken. We haven't had takeout once since we've been married. And yet you threw such a devoted wife out of the house. I really can't believe it. Well then, I'm going to let her recuperate at my house for a while. You aren't allowed to visit her during this time. Hey, honey, where are you now? Come back to me. Absolutely not. Thanks to Aaron, we're finally separated. I don't want you to ruin my life again. What do you mean by ruined? I was a little too strict with you, but I took care of you financially as your husband, didn't I? Really? I'm going to change from now on. Please come back. You're recovered and out of my parents' house, right? I don't know where you are now, but please come back. I can't live without you. You criticized me a lot like I was useless. And now, you say you can't survive without me. Because I can't cook, clean, or do anything. I eat TV meals and fast food all the time, and my house is a mess. My clothes are wrinkled, and I don't have a shirt to wear to work tomorrow. I'm not going to be your maid anymore. If you want a housekeeper, you can pay to hire a professional. Next time, get a super healthy wife who will keep herself in shape for the rest of her life. I know! I tried to outsource it, but it's going to cost me more than I imagined. So I met a girl on an app and brought her home. But when she saw the trashed house, she instantly ran away. We can't even have a girlfriend if it's like this. I don't want to pay, but I want someone to do the housework. What a lousy person you are. But you have been doing it all that time. From now on, I'll do my best to help you. I'll even give you a little more allowance if you want. Just come back. My parents have given up on me, and I have no one to rely on. Have they? I heard you moved out, so I thought I could finally go there. I was excited to visit them, but they scolded me at the front door and didn't even let me in. They said they don't want an embarrassing son like me. They don't want to see me anymore. Wow, they are still pretty angry. Perhaps I've told them too much about our marriage. Please, honey, get back together with me. I promise I'll take good care of you next time. It must be hard for you to go from being a housewife to being independent. It's tough, but it's fun, so I'm fine. Thanks to Aaron, I'm in perfect health now. I found a job and started working right away. My boss is nice and good looking. I have a crush on him. What? We've only been separated for a month. You're already eyeing another guy? Women switch so quickly, so please, stay away from me. You're already my past scum. I don't care what kind of life you have. Oh no. Well then, take care. Take this opportunity to learn how to cook your favorite things on your own. I never heard from Neil again. Apart from that, the property division was agreed to and signed by him a few days later. 
Perhaps Erin had played some kind of a hand in this. From time to time, she contacts me to ask how I am. If it had not been for Neil's lies, I'm sure we would have become closer friends. Neil still visits his parents regularly. Each time, he is scolded and denied entry to the house. He finally tried attending a cooking class, but he made a series of creepy comments like, you should do my housework, to the instructor. He was immediately banned. The incident was recorded and spread on SNS. He's now receiving scorn from all over as this is what happens to men who can't do housework. Natalie, where are you? What are you doing now? Sis, it's been a while. I'm at work right now. Actually, it's my break time. What's up? Speaking of which, we've both been busy. It's been about a year since we last contacted each other. How are you, sis? You know, now is not the time for chit-chat. Huh? You secretly got married without telling me dad or mom? Me? Married? Yes, when did you exactly get married? You never told us. Was it someone you really didn't want to introduce? It's fine if you didn't have a wedding ceremony, but at least you could have consulted the family before the marriage. Huh? I'm not married. What do you mean? Did you get married and divorced immediately? And now you are a single mother? No, no. I haven't gotten married or divorced, and I haven't had any children. Don't lie. Then why is your child in my house? My child? Leaving the child for a month? What were you thinking? If it were a week, it would be understandable, but a month is too long. I'm not your babysitter. Come pick up your child now. Wait, calm down, sis. How can I calm down? And it's a newborn baby, you know? I don't know if it's because of work or something else, but even though I'm a housewife, I have various things to do. If the baby can't meet the mother for a month, isn't it tough for the child? I'm sorry. I really don't understand what's going on. Wait, are you saying you don't remember leaving a child with us? I have no memory of leaving a child. Besides, I don't have any children, so there's no way I could leave one. I also want to get married, but I haven't had the chance, and I don't even have a boyfriend. So it's impossible for me to have a child. Huh? What do you mean? I'm the one who wants to know. Even if you tell me not to suddenly leave a child, I have no idea what you're talking about. But I'm telling you the truth. I am taking care of your child. If it's not your child, then whose child is this? Wait, who left the child with you in the first place? While I was away, my husband accepted the child from a woman. A woman claiming to be your friend suddenly came, saying, Nathalie asked me to take care of her child, but I have urgent matters and can't care for it. I hope her sister's family can take care of it. According to my husband, that's what she said before leaving the baby with my husband. Huh? What's going on? That he just accepted the baby? He should know that I don't have children. Isn't it strange that he agreed to take care of the baby so easily? Well, it seems even my husband was surprised, and he tried to confirm with you, but the woman said you were facing some circumstances, and she said not to ask anything and just take care of it. If it was your child, it would be like a niece to my husband. In the end, it seems we couldn't refuse and ended up taking care of the baby. Seriously? I was really shocked. When I came back home, my husband was suddenly holding the baby. I see. Well, since we accepted the baby, I had no choice but to look after it. I hurriedly ran to buy milk, clothes, and diapers. I did my best to take care of the baby. I thought that surely, if I keep the baby for a week, you would contact me at some point. Yet you haven't made a single phone call. Finally, I got fed up and sent a message to you today. I see. That woman claiming to be a friend seems suspicious. She probably left her child with you and your husband. It seems likely. However, we have no idea about her true identity. Both I and my husband are troubled. According to my husband, she left a child and quickly left. He couldn't ask for her name, and he doesn't remember her face. Hmm. Among your friends, is there one who recently gave birth? We need to find the real mother quickly and return the child. I'm almost at the limit, you know. Lately, the baby has been crying at night a lot, and I'm sleep deprived. So far, I don't have any friends who come to mind, but I'll check a bit. Thank you, Nathalie. I'm counting on you. Hey, 
Billy, it's Natalie. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Is this a good time? What, Natalie? Why are you so surprised? Um, nothing. I was just surprised because it was so sudden. So what's up? My sister messaged me just now. From Mackenzie? Yeah, about the child. Oh, about that. Did she tell you to come and pick up the baby? That's right. She got mad at me for leaving the kid for a month. I'm sorry my wife said those terrible things. Don't worry about it, Nathalie. What? Because you have your own reasons. You can't raise a child anymore, right? We'll take full responsibility for you. You don't have to worry. No, 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 no. That child is not my child. What? But your friend said it was your child. That friend was lying, because I'm not married and I didn't have a child. What? Then whose child is that in our house now? Oh, Billy, I'd like to know that too. And can you tell me who brought the child? I will have to ask her what she was thinking. I'm sorry, Natalie. I don't remember exactly either. Do you remember any facial features? Was she tall? Did she have longer hair? Well, I didn't really pay attention to those details. After all, it seems that she has some urgent matters to attend to. She quickly left, leaving the child to me. Actually, I should have confirmed with you that time, but I thought maybe you were in a situation where you can't raise your own child. Maybe you were in a desperate situation and couldn't contact you easily. But if you have settled down, I thought you would contact us in some way. But before I knew it, a month had passed without us reaching out. It's just all my fault. It ended up causing you trouble, and I'm truly sorry for that. No, you just believed that the baby was my child. You don't have to blame yourself. Yeah. Then from now on, why don't we all work together to find the real mother? What? Because we don't even know whose child it is. We can't just raise the baby like this. But how are we going to find her? For now, I'll contact all the friends I can think of. If we still can't find her, we'll report it to the police. The police? Yeah, we can't just leave a child in your care like this. No, let's not just go to the police. What? Why not? Actually, when I took the kid from your friend, I felt like it was destiny. Destiny? We have been married for almost ten years, but we haven't been blessed with a child. I love my life right now, just the two of us. But the truth is, I always wanted to have a child. But Mackenzie seems to have given up on it, because she's too old. I was getting impatient inside. I thought that maybe I'd never be a father. I didn't know that. Then, when the child came to us, and we started taking care of the child, I was convinced that I could be a father, even if it wasn't my own child. Are you saying- Of course. If we can find our real parents, I'm sure that would be great. But if we can't find them, then Mackenzie and I will be responsible for the baby. I intend to raise this child. I see. I wonder what my sister thinks about it. Mackenzie? Yes, you are usually busy working. After all, it's my sister who mainly takes care of the baby, right? That's true, but... It's not her child, and they are not even blood-related. We don't even know whose child it is, and I don't think it's easy to do. In fact, she was lamenting that the child was crying so much at night. That she was having trouble sleeping. Don't worry, she will get used to the lack of sleep. What? After all, mothers in the world have been raising children splendidly, even while sleep-deprived. Sooner or later, when the child gets older, she will be able to sleep. She just has to work a little harder. What? No, not being able to sleep is tough, isn't it? And if it's your own child, maybe you can tolerate a little sleep deprivation. But in my sister's case, it's not her own child. If that's the case, I'll convince her. I'm sure she'll understand. She is a housewife, so she has time on her hands. I'm sure she'll become more aware of her role as a mother. No, I'm not talking about motherhood. I'm saying the baby is not my sister's own baby. Would it be more correct to say that she's awakening to her motherhood? Even if it's not your own child, if you're with a cute baby, you'll naturally feel affection for it. Besides, she used to be a nursery school teacher, right? She's used to dealing with children, so she can easily raise a child on her own. But I think there's a difference between work and actually raising a kid. Besides, I'm not going to let her raise a child by herself. I'll take care of the kid on my days off, too. I'm going to help my wife to raise the child. Really? Anyway, you're busy with your work, right? You don't have to worry about it anymore. Just leave the child to us. I see.
Hey, sis. Nathalie, did you find out anything about the mother? I'm sorry, not yet. I've tried contacting my friends. None of them have had babies recently. From friends who are already married and raising children, they laughed at me and said there was no way they would suddenly leave their child with a friend's sister and her husband. Well, that's true. Who would do such a thing? I guess I'll have to report it to the police now. Well, Billy told me not to tell the police. What? Did you talk to Billy? Yeah, I messaged him the other day. I wanted to check again to ask some questions about that friend, but he said he doesn't remember any details. I knew it. He wants to raise the child as his own. That's why he doesn't want us to tell the police. What? What? You haven't talked about it? He wants to continue to raise the child. He said he's going to convince you. Are you kidding me? Is he trying to force me to take care of that child? I guess so. He seems to be planning to raise the child together with you. That's a lie. When that lady came to our home, for some reason he was home alone. Billy has been drinking a lot these days and doesn't come home until late at night. And even on weekends, he's away on business trips or for work. He's hardly at home. He's never taking care of the child himself. How can he say that raise the child together? I see. The story seems inconsistent. I'm sure he's just trying to look cool in front of you. I'm going to have to call the police and have them take the baby away. Hey, sis, don't you think something's wrong? What? What is? The woman who brought the child. I don't think she's really my friend. If she came to my sister's house, maybe she's an acquaintance of either you or Billy. I don't think she's related to me. Oh, I see. Does that mean Billy is lying? I'm going to look into it. Will you help me, sis? Yeah, of course. <coughs> Natalie. <coughs> Oh, please, answer the phone. Hey, sorry for the late reply, I was working. What's wrong? Do you know where is Mackenzie? What? Mackenzie left the house. She said she had to go out on an errand. She left the child with me in the morning and never came home. I tried calling her, but she wouldn't return my calls. She doesn't read my messages. After a while, she replied, I'm not going back home anymore. Nathalie, do you know where she is? What the hell is she doing, leaving me alone with the child? Well, I think you know why my sister left the house. What? It's a child. She didn't give birth to the child herself. She was exhausted from taking care of the child all day. Other housewives with children are managing to raise them on their own. There's no way she couldn't do it. Even for a housewife, it's hard to raise a child alone like that. So she just ran away? That's unacceptable. Even though it's someone else's child, it's natural to take care of them. How could you say such things? What do you mean? You said you would cooperate in raising the child. But in reality, you hardly come home, leaving everything to my sister. Isn't that right? Well, it's because of my work, so it can't be helped, right? If I didn't work, Mackenzie and the child wouldn't have anything to eat. Billy, Mackenzie knows whose child it is. What? And what do you mean? Whose child is it? You said you couldn't find anything about the mother, right? Acting like that won't work anymore. It's your child, isn't it? Saying that my friend came to leave her child here is a big lie. You just brought your own child back, right? The child born between you and your affair partner. What? How? In the first place, it's strange for my friend to suddenly visit my sister's house. It's also too unnatural that you don't remember the face of that friend at all. What was more suspicious than anything else was you refused to report it to the police. You insisted that you are going to raise the child. Um. I hired a PI to look into you, and then it turned out you have been cheating on my sister for the past two years. What? You used a PI? Of course. I got my sister's approval for it. So she suspected me too? Well, if a husband who used to come home on time starts coming home late every day, you'd suspect infidelity. You lie to my sister that you work late, and you repeatedly meet up with another woman. Eventually, she was pregnant with your child, but she's a part-time worker and 10 years younger than you. Although she safely gave birth, she lacks confidence in raising the child. She refused to be a mother, saying she still wanted to enjoy her life and be free. That's why you took the child home. But you couldn't tell my sister that the child was from your affair. 
so you pretended the child was mine and tried to convince my sister to raise the child. You know everything? You are a scumbag. Not only the cheating, but you also lied about the child born from the affair and made your wife raise the child. I had no choice. Even though the baby was birthed from my affair, it's still my child. So if it's my child, it's not unnatural for my wife to raise it. Besides, Mackenzie used to be a nursery school teacher, so she must love kids. In fact, she should be grateful that she can raise her husband's child, even though she hasn't given birth herself. Do you get it? I can't believe you. I'm telling you, Mackenzie is thinking of getting a divorce. What? Divorce? Well, of course. Did you think you could avoid divorce? Did you think she can stay married to a scum like you? Seriously? I'm in trouble. I can't raise a child by myself. I have a job, you know? How am I supposed to take care of the child during the day? Even if you say that, if the child is genuinely yours, you have to raise it responsibly. You can leave the child at daycare during the day, or ask the mother to come back. You two should work together to raise the child. The problem is, I can't get in touch with her at all either. I don't know what to do. Just looking after the child alone for one day is overwhelming. It's too hard. I was about to panic. Without Mackenzie, I'll go crazy this time. You have been pushing it on her for so long. Now you realize that? I understand. I'll apologize to Mackenzie, so please, Nathalie, convince her, because I'm sure she'll listen to you. I don't want to. No matter how much you apologize, I don't think it will change my sister's mind. It's all your own fault, so you'll have to take care of it yourself. Well then, I'll be a stranger to you soon. I'll block you now. Goodbye. Oh no! <coughs> Nathalie, please, don't abandon me. Oh no, my child is crying again. Please, help me. Mackenzie and Billy divorced. My sister went back to my parents' house and Billy had to raise the child by himself. Now, with the help of his parents, he is now doing his best as a single father. However, he started part-time work in addition to his job to pay the alimony demanded by my sister and is reportedly exhausted every day. According to rumors, he is said to be earnestly dedicated to parenting, which brings relief to both me and my sister. On the other hand, my sister started working as a nursery school teacher again. Compared to when she was a full-time housewife, my sister seemed more lively. She says that if she meets a good man, she would like to get married again. While hoping that my sister will finally be connected with a wonderful man, I'm also considering starting to look for a partner soon. Hey Grace, it was nice seeing you earlier. Sorry for just dropping by out of the blue. I was out and about and felt like visiting. Oh, hey Willow. No worries, I happen to be home. But in the future, it'd be nice if you could let me know in advance. Got it. By the way, I caught a glimpse of the room in the back when I borrowed the restroom. Was the door opened? That pure white dress there. A wedding dress by any chance? Oh, yeah, it is. What? Really? For who? I'm in the middle of making it for someone. Ah, oh, I see. By the way, you often dress quite nicely when you go out. Your schedule varies, so it doesn't seem like you're going to the office. You're observant. I mean, we live in the same apartment complex. Didn't you mention you've been working from home before? Could it be... that you have a boyfriend? <laughs> no way, that's not it. I occasionally go out to deliver finished products or meet clients in person for discussions. I have to dress appropriately for that, you know. It's nothing like what you suspect. Ah, oh, I see. But seriously, single mothers seem always so busy, don't they? Huh? You changed the topic all of a sudden. I'm just curious. Indeed. 
Seeing a parent does seem quite challenging. They have to fulfill the role of the dad and mom on their own. And with kids to take care of, it's not easy to work as they'd like. Some people are like that, it seems. Oh, sorry, but I should be heading out soon. I've got to go out for a work appointment. Uh huh. Not to meet a boyfriend, is it? I'll keep quiet, so have fun! <laughs> I'm telling you, there's really nothing like that. Anyway, I really have to go now. Okay, see you later. Hey, Grace! What on earth is going on? Explain it! Willow? You sound upset. Is something wrong? Huh, please! You went to the wedding venue with John, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I was there for work, and we happened to bump into each other at the entrance. Liar! What the... I'm more suited for him. Just because he lives nearby doesn't mean you can go for him like nobody's business, okay? He's mine! A woman like you is not worthy of him. Um, are you okay? I thought there wouldn't be anyone interested in him because he's a divorce with baggage. But I guess I was naive. You better back down. Listen, I told you. We just happened to be there at the same time because of my job. There's nothing going on between us like you think. And he's planning to get married soon. Married? Yeah, he has a wedding coming up. That's why there is a wedding dress at your place. No, that has nothing to do with this. Trying to cover it up won't work. You talked about making it for someone else, but it's actually for yourself. No, really, you're wrong. I was commissioned to create it for someone else. I won't believe anything you say anymore. Anyway, I object to your marriage to John. He's supposed to, to marry me. No other woman is allowed to touch him. I don't know why you're telling me this. I'm not the one he's marrying. Besides, who he marries is his decision, right? Shut up! Poor people like you shouldn't talk down to others. Poor? A family where the mother has to work to make ends meet is poor. You're working to keep afloat, right? No, I've been doing this job since I was single because I enjoy it. My husband understands, so I continue. Husband? You have some nerve to tell such a lie. Um, Willow? Seriously, what's wrong with you? I feel like there's a few misunderstandings here. Maybe we should calm down and talk this through? If we keep going like this, nothing will change resolved. What's the misunderstanding? I absolutely won't let you have a wedding. Hold on. Let's first try to clear up the parts where our conversation isn't aligning, okay? The reason it's not aligning is because you're lying. No matter how you try to cover it up, it's useless. I won't ever let John go. Oh god. Willow, what in the world have you done? First, you burst into my place, and then you start tearing up the wedding dress. Huh, you got what you deserved. This is your punishment for trying to steal my John. What? A punishment? I tore your wedding dress to shreds. Your wedding is cancelled now. I'm the one marrying him. <laughs> I've told you that dress isn't mine. It was something I was commissioned to make. You're lying. 
a poor single mother like you is undeserving of him. Single mother? That's right. Even if John is a single father, I don't want you to think you guys are the same. A poor single mother like you can't possibly be a match for a business owner like him. You should know your place. Um, I'm not a single mother. Yeah, right. I have a husband. What are you talking about? I've never seen a man coming out of your place. Of course, you haven't seen him. He had to take a job assignment out of town before we moved here. Huh? He's coming back next spring. But what? You're married, but you still try to marry John? Unbelievable! You even prepared a dress for it. Tearing it up was the right things to do. Counseling your disgust to infidelity when it was the right choice. You're so wrong. How am I wrong? He's marrying someone else. Huh? His fiancée is his secretary. Well, why were you guys at the wedding venue together? I went there for a business meeting. A meeting? I work as a dressmaker specializing in wedding dresses. I was asked by a client to attend a meeting with the wedding planner today. So when I went there, I ran into John, who was there for a side visit, right at the entrance. But there was no other woman with him. His fiancée had an urgent matter, so he came by himself before her. Uh, so... The dress I tore to pieces. Yeah, that was your sister's wedding dress. What? My sister? Wait, you mean she's marrying John? I mean... How do you guys know each other in the first place? You do know that we went to the same high school, right? She used to that connection and asked me to make a dress for her. No way. Really? So, I need to contact her now. Um... Speak later. Grace! Hey! Answer me! What? My husband just told me we're getting a divorce. It's your fault. You better take responsibility for this. It's because you said unnecessary things. Unnecessary things? You told my sister about John, didn't you? That's how he got wind of it. Well, you know, if I were going to mention the wedding dress, that was a topic I couldn't skip. But Willow... What? What's up with your being so obsessed with another man when you're married? You were quick to accuse me of having an affair and being filthy. But who's really the filthy one here? Um... I heard that you were flirting with John. But you actually didn't have any contact with them beyond being neighbors, right? Yet, you got so worked up just because I was with him, burst into my house, and tore up a wedding dress. Your actions are incomprehensible, and I can't make sense of it. Moreover, claiming you're the one marrying him, your husband wanting a divorce is no surprise at all. <laughs> when I asked about the dress, it was your fault for not telling me it belonged to my sister. It's confidential customer information, you know. Even if you're her older sister, I can't disclose it without her permission. Besides, regardless of whose dress it was, destroying someone else's property like that is way out of line. Oh, uh, and you know what? When you found it in my place, you didn't just happen to see it because the door was open, did you? 
You broke the padlock and entered the room, right? What? Why? There is a security camera. What? No way. Where is it? I checked around, you know. You were indeed looking around suspiciously, and that's all captured perfectly. Are you by any chance a repeat offender with this kind of thing? Breaking the lock without making a noise. That's pretty scary. Why did you do that? Because I was wondering if you were hiding something. Given that you went to the trouble of adding a padlock, I've been curious about it for a while. It's just a workspace. Hey, what are you going to do about your sister's wedding dress? Ugh, the wedding is this weekend. The dress you tore up is clearly beyond repair. She must be pretty upset, huh? That's something you can handle again. There are only four days left. It's impossible. Oh no. But isn't four days enough to meet in somehow? I know how to use a sewing machine. I can help too. Please don't joke around. Do you have any idea how long it takes to make a wedding dress? Anyway, make sure to talk to your sister. What she wants is the most important. Um. Okay. See ya. I immediately apologized to the sister for the trouble before delivery. She insisted. Rather, my sister caused trouble for you. I'd like to pay for it. In the end, I decided to accept her offer. She ended up renting the dress after all. Nevertheless, I heard she had a beautiful wedding. Several months later, I received another dress commission from her, and I delivered it without any issues this time. The dress will be used for an overseas wedding, aiming to replace the better memories from before. The total cost incurred up to this point is approximately thirty thousand dollars. It's all covered by Willow. She's now going through a custody battle. And is desperately working part time to make installment payments for the expenses. Valerie, hey, if you can see this, please respond. Don't ignore me. This is an emergency. Valerie. Yes. Who may I ask is this? It's me, Avery. Avery. It's been a while. I'm pretty sure I deleted anyone with that name from my mind about seven years ago. So goodbye. Hold on. I have something very important to tell you. I even got a new number just to get in touch with you. I was wondering how you could contact me after I blocked you, but that's why. Why go to such lengths? What do you want? Did you contact me just to irritate me? Not at all. It's an emergency. There's also something about your sister. Huh? About Taylor? It's a pretty serious matter. I thought it'd be a good idea for you to hear about it, even though I knew I might be treated rudely. I don't really understand, but well, I'll listen. So. What is it? Taylor ran away with another guy. Oh man. She left divorce papers. I had no choice but to agree. Darn. What? That's it? Your reaction is lame. Oh yeah. I think that was more than sufficient. Not at all. It's your own sister we're talking about, so shouldn't you be a little more alarmed? Well, you're probably like if you were normal siblings. You're not. You said she ran away with another guy, right? In her case, it's not the first time. There's nothing to be alarmed about. It's more like, oh,、uh, again? Seriously? 
Why are you so surprised? She did the same when you guys had an affair, right? Ugh. She moved to our apartment complex on a different floor so she could attend a university nearby. You guys took advantage of my busy work schedule and betrayed me. You quit your job, left divorce papers, and left. She also dropped out of university and moved out of the apartment. You guys ended up at your family's place in the suburbs, right? It's been seven years, but I remember it well. I thought I had erased from my memory, but when I saw your name, the memories came back with anger. Uh, well... I was left alone and signed a divorce. I had to cancel the lease for the two apartments and go through the moving procedures. I had to dispose of the furniture and things that you guys left behind. I also had to take care of the necessary procedures at work and at the county office. It was during the busy work period, so it was really tough. Uh, well, I'm very sorry for that time. If you're sorry, don't contact me. Bye. Oh, come on. Please wait. You have to hear the main point. I'm really begging you. It's something that will affect your future. You'll definitely regret it if you don't listen. Fine. What is it? Raise my son with me. Um, your son? Taylor and I had a child together. He's 10 months old now. His name is Adam. He's in the adorable stage, you know. Okay. So? So, will you raise him with me? Is that what you mean by I'll regret it if I don't listen? I regret listening to this now. You're talking trash. You got some nerve to ask me that. I'm not talking trash. It's obvious that you should raise him. What? Listen, think about it. You're my ex-wife, right? Well, I divorced you because I got together with Taylor. The child born between us is Adam. Since his mother is no longer around. You, as my ex-wife and her sister, should take on the role of his mother. It makes sense, doesn't it? Not at all. And if it's not trash talk, think before you speak. Even if you don't get it, you have a responsibility as his mother. Get back together with me as soon as possible and start taking care of him. No, it's none of my business. Darn you! Don't you find your own son cute? You mean my nephew? Even so, I've never met him and have no idea if I'll find him cute. And don't you think that I might really be married? That's impossible. Wow, you sound confident. Aren't you a bit too responsible? Are you saying you're abandoning your responsibility as a mother? It's neglecting your parental duties. Cut it out. I'm not irresponsible. I'm just uninvolved. Well then, bye. Hey, Valerie. Hey, Avery. I hear you're in the lobby of my company with a baby. What in the world are you doing there? Oh, Valerie. I heard. You started a business and are now the CEO. So what? In that case, we wouldn't have financial problems in raising a child. <laughs> you being the CEO for us is amazing. Oh yeah? What do you mean, oh yeah? <laughs> We're getting back together and going to raise a child, you know. It's only natural that I'm concerned about my wife's financial situation, right? Seriously, what are you talking about? I have no intention of getting back together with you. Or raising my sister's child. I've already told you so the other day. Stop it already. Listen, Valerie. Isn't that like against societal norms? 
What part of you thinks you can lecture about societal norms? What you're saying is like a reckless track overloaded with too much nonsense causing an accident. Go ask the society about who's right, you or me. I bet 100 out of 100 will say I'm right. No way. That's not how you speak to your husband, is it? God darn it. I won't get back together with you. It's the worst thing to say as a mother to Adam. I'm not his mother. Stop pissing me off. It's annoying if you're in the lobby. Go somewhere else. Nah. Listen here. Think it through. You're nearing 40 and have no hope of getting married and having kids. Considering your future, coming back to me is the best option. If you listen to me now, society will finally see you as a respectable woman. Really? If I'm married and have children, society will acknowledge me as a respectable woman, is that it? That's right. You finally get it, huh? Then, let's go and get the marriage license. We'll go to the county clerk's office right now. Also, we need to arrange for the adoption of my son by you. To avoid any future disputes regarding inheritance and such, we should take care of that as well. Listen, the marriage license and the adoption are not necessary, you know. Why? What are you talking about? You need to do that. Otherwise, you won't become a respectable woman. I'm already a mother of two children. No. Now, let's get to the point. The point? You've been jobless ever since then, right? Well... I've already found out all about it. Your parents, who used to support you, are now is a nursing home. Taylor disappeared after cheating on you with some guy she met while working at the bar. You found yourself in a tough spot, needing to find someone to provide for you. So, when you heard that I had started a business and become CEO, you thought it was a golden opportunity. A chance to make me your new benefactor, housekeeper, and childcare provider. Uh, well... But you see... Since we parted ways, I've gone on to meet a new man and got married. What? You're lying! It's true. And we started this company together. What the? By the way, my husband is the vice president. You being married is utterly unthinkable. A woman close to 40 like you could get married and become a CEO. That's unfair. However, I'm grateful that I was able to do all that. You've got to be kidding. If you don't believe me, you can have one of my friends confirm it for you. So, our family assets are going to be passed down to our children. You, as an unrelated party, should just get lost. Once I revealed my current status, Avery finally retreated. However, I was genuinely concerned about my nephew, so I contacted my former in-laws. To my surprise, they were in a panic when they found out that Taylor had left. They quickly made unnecessary arrangements, and my nephew was adopted by an acquaintance of my former mother-in-law. I thought Avery had become lonely without a wife and child but he had a surprise in store a few months later when Taylor, who had been dumped by her boyfriend, returned to him. When she found out that their son had been adopted away, she became furious. In response, he was also enraged. Their heated dispute led to severe damage to their apartment. They were forced to move out after the landlord demanded compensation. Thinking that these two are my ex-husband and my own sister, I can't help but feel mortified. I've already cut ties with them, so I'll try my best not to let it bother me. I appreciate you for divorcing Jacob. Please leave him and Safia to me. 
I promise to make both of them happy because he chose me. You're welcome. I don't care any more now that you've paid me to cover the damage. I wish you and Jacob a long and happy life together. Yes, of course. Unlike you, I will not allow another woman to take him away. Yeah, whatever. It's obvious because I'm more attractive than you are. He's crazy about me. I will not make the mistake of allowing my husband to abandon me. I don't care about that unfaithful man. I'm more concerned about my daughter Sofia. She's alright now, but she's always been a sickly child. Oh yeah, of course, Sofia. I'm sure we'll get along perfectly too. I hope so. Even so, you never know when she might become ill again due to the change of an environment. Please take care of Sofia for me. As I said, I got it. I'm already retired, but I'm a nurse practitioner. Whatever happens to Sofia, I can handle it perfectly. So could you please stop from acting like your mother? It irritates me. You're a loser who was dumped by both her husband and daughter. Yeah, you are right. I had no idea Sofia, let alone my husband, would follow you. It's really miserable, isn't it? You gave up your successful career to start a family. You did everything you could to support and care for your daughter, and now you're being dumped. I'm curious what your life was all about. It's none of your business. So the divorce is finalized, and I'm leaving this house. The rest is yours to do as you please. Okay, I'll move there right away and start a new life with my family. I just returned from college, and there isn't any of your stuff, Mom. You really got divorced and left. Hey, Sofia, are you sure you don't need to be with me? You don't have to worry about your college tuition. What did you say? Who would want to be with you, you useless old hag? Because you gave birth to me as a weak child, my life has been ruined. Don't ever show your face in front of me again if you divorce us and left us. Did you just call me a useless old hag? It's all because you gave birth to me as a child with a weak constitution. Because of you, I got a fever easily and was hospitalized. I miss school all the time. You ruined my life. A mother like you is a useless old hag. You were out of your mind. Do you realize how concerned I was every time you got a fever or were admitted to the hospital? I hardly ever slept in order to be with you and take care of you. What horrible things to say to your mother! Shut up, you old bitch! I was only accepted to the correspondence school because of you. Because of you, I was denied admission to my first choice of college. All because you didn't give birth to me as a healthy baby. What are you talking about? I did everything I could to help you to get into high school and college. I generously hired tutors and did my best to teach you. But you were the one who was fleeing for whatever reason. What? You used to take half days nap, claiming that the medicine you were taking made you sleepy, and you ran away from studying, claiming that an hour of studying made you sick. I'm going to be frank. Failing the exam is entirely your fault. You used your illness as an excuse for everything. Shut up, Mom! It's all your fault. I wish you had given birth to me as a healthy, normal child. Then I could have studied harder and passed all my exams. You have no right to speak about me, Sofia. Never again show your face in front of me. I'll get sick just looking at your grim face. Hi, it's been a long time. I hope you've been well since then. Yes, I have been very well. Perhaps it's because I've moved on from the cheating man and my self-centered daughter. I'm doing very well every day. Well, you're well enough to be sarcastic. I'm relieved. I'm sure the transplant will go well. What? Transplant? What on earth are you talking about? Actually, I have an important announcement for you, Lila. It's about Sofia, the daughter we adopted from you. Actually, we only recently discovered that she has kidney disease. What? Kidney disease? I believe she graduated from college without incident and was doing well at her job. It was discovered last year during a medical checkup at work. They said she might need dialysis after a thorough examination. 
no way. She was improving, and now she has such a serious illness? I really feel sorry for her. She was going to be fine at work, and there was no indication of it. If she requires dialysis, she will be unable to work at her current office. You are right. My grandfather had dialysis as well, but it appears to be extremely difficult. Sophia, on the other hand, is dating someone with the intention of marrying, and her dad is the son of the company's president. So if she marries him, she will marry into money. But she might miss out on such an opportunity due to her kidney disease. Calm down, Nara. It's true that kidney disease is a serious illness, but if you were a nurse, you are aware of something, right? With proper treatment, whether dialysis or medication, you can live a long life. If you tell him everything, he might understand and support her. It doesn't work that way. A woman who has dialysis twice a week is unfit to be the president's wife. If he finds out about this, he will adoptly dump her. Are you sure? So the only way out is a kidney transplant. Then she won't need dialysis and can live her life normally, and she doesn't have to break up with the president's son. So please, Lila, give your kidney to Sofia. What? You mean my kidney? The doctor said that as her stepmother, I could also perform a transplant. But I'm too scared to give away my precious organ. I just can't. I believe it should be done by her mother. What? They say kidney disease is hereditary, so you're partly to blame. So it makes sense to accept responsibility to provide her with a kidney transplant. Besides, I'm sure you're compatible if it's between a blood-related mother and daughter. No way. I'm not her mother anymore. The doctor said it's okay if you give your organ to her, right? Then, as her mother, you should donate your organs to her. I told you I don't want to do that. In the end, Sofia is my stepdaughter, not my child. Why should I donate to her? But you promised her that if you remarried, you would make her happy as her mother. That's why, as her mother, I'm doing my part by looking for a donor. Just shut up and say you'll donate a kidney. Can I tell the doctor that I found a donor? No way! Please don't bring me into this. What did you say? Are you really Sophia's mother? No, you're her mother. Shut up! If you don't donate a kidney, Sophia's future is all ruined. She will not be able to marry any money, and she will have to spend the rest of her life on dialysis. Are you really going to let your little girl go through that? Well, it's sad that Sophia has to spend her life like that. By the way, what does Sofia say about kidney transplants? When we divorced, she seemed to dislike me a lot. And yet, is she saying she'll accept my kidney? Of course, she's saying, "Bring it to me, bitch." It's your fault I'm like this, so you have to take responsibility. Excuse me. By the way, don't ever tell anyone that you donated your kidney to her. I'm going to act as if I was the one who donated the organ. Then. Our wonderful parent-child love will then move his boyfriend and his parents. We'll use the momentum to persuade them to marry, and both of our families will live happily ever after. You're just going to take the credit without putting yourself in any danger. It's because I'm Sofia's mother now. It's easy to explain this way, and it's just better for us. So come to the hospital for a compatibility test. Even if you've been divorced and kicked out, you're still her mother, right? You do it for your own daughter, wouldn't you? Why don't you tell the real mother? What? I said, why don't you tell her real mother what you just said? Oh, but I believe that she didn't get miserably kicked out. She left on her own. Wait a minute. What do you mean, her real mother? Lila, you're the one who gave birth to her, aren't you? I'm just a foster parent. I didn't give birth to Sofia, so if you're looking for a donor, please ask the birth mother. I don't have their contact information, but I'm sure Jacob does. No, 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 I don't get it at all. Were you a foster parent? Are you trying to say that? Wait, Jacob was divorced twice. From the looks of it, he's still hiding it. 
He said he'll tell Sophia all about it when she turns twenty. I believe he is putting it off because it's too difficult. So, explain to me what's going on. Whose child is Sophia? She's Jacob's ex-wife's child. She became ill from postpartum stress shortly after giving birth to Sophia. They got divorced. What? Then Jacob met me and got remarried. Sophia was about five years old then, but she was at her sickest. She was frequently hospitalized and sick. As a result, she doesn't seem to recall much of her past. She has no money of his ex-wife. So, Sophia doesn't know anything. Does this mean she's been thinking you're her biological parent the whole time? Something like that. I wanted to tell her earlier, but Jacob wouldn't let me. He kept saying we'd talk about it when she's a little healthier. No way. So will you tell Sophia for me? I'm sorry I can't even be a useless old hag for you. I won't give my precious organs to her. I'm hoping she'll be able to schedule an appointment with her own mother soon, as she can receive an organ transplant. Hey, mom, is it true? Is what dad says true? Are you not my real mother? No, I'm not related to you by blood at all. I'm your second mother. I'm just your foster mother. So you've been looking after me despite the fact that we are not blood relatives? Yes, I did. Even though you weren't my blood relative, I thought of you as my little girl. So I did my best to keep you healthy and happy. I gave up my career and my family. I sacrificed everything in my life just for you. You gotta be kidding me! I suppose my wish was granted. You spent less time in the hospital since entering middle school, and I was happy because you were able to attend school. But you used to blame me for your academic shortcomings. You used to attack me and throw things at me. They claim that children have no idea how concerned their parents are about them. Oh well, well. Good luck with the kidney transplant. If your father told you everything, it means you've communicated with your biological mother. You too are a true mother and daughter, but I hope she passes the compatibility test. Wait, mom, please do not end the conversation. I still have something to tell you. What? Well, actually. It's about my birth mother. I've been able to get in touch with her, but she refused to donate her organs to me. Oh. She claims she doesn't recognize her daughter because she hasn't seen me in decades, and she says that she can't give her organs to me. Then why don't you just ask your father to donate it to you? After all, you do have another biological parent. Well, he doesn't want to do it either. He says he is too preoccupied with his job to take the compatibility test or undergo surgery. He stated that it is the mother's responsibility to take care for and support her child, so don't expect him to do so. I can't believe that your own father refuses to do it. He's a total jerk. So please, I only have you now. I'll get down on my knees or whatever. So please, give me your kidney. I don't want to do that. I'm not your biological mother, and don't you remember how you abandoned me as a useless old hag? Why should I donate my organs to you? I apologize for what I did. Thanks to you, I got well, but I looked out on you. I ran away, blaming everything on my illness, but in reality, I blame you for everything. I'm so sorry. I'm sincerely sorry for what I did back then, Sophia. So please don't give up on me. I want to marry him too, and I want to keep my job, but I don't have much time. But you were the one who abandoned me first. I'm sorry for your illness, but I'm under no obligation to assist you. You must be joking. Aren't you going to help me? We've been together since I was a little girl. You cared more about my health and happiness than anyone else, and now you're abandoning me. I hope you find a donor soon. Well. Bye. Please, let's cooperate now. I can't take care of her any longer. Huh? Actually, after that, Sofia got desperate. She said that she was doomed. She consumed a lot of alcohol, sweets, and salt. She quickly progressed to the point where she needed dialysis treatment. So, did she already receive dialysis? Yes, that's right. 
So she goes to the dialysis for half of the week, and I have to pick her up and drop her off every week. As a result, I find it difficult to go shopping or on a trip. And Sophia is always complaining about being sick and pushing me around. This nursing lifestyle is no longer acceptable to me. Don't be so whiny. You are her mother. You have to do your best to be there for her. I can't do it anymore. I'm at my limit. That's why we need to work together. As stepmothers, I like to take turns caring for her. What? Jacob even says he'd pay you some pocket money for you. So that's not that bad, is it? I'm sure Sophia would prefer someone she'd used to. Please help me take care of her. Then can you get me seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars? What? I can't possibly do it without that kind of pocket money. So pay me seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars, please. Don't be silly. You're being ridiculous. How can you expect me to pay seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars just to look after her? I'm serious. Attending to a sick child is exhausting and mentally draining. I did it out of love, but that was because I was her mother. But I'm not anymore, and I won't be able to do so unless I get something worthy of it. But seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars is a bit. I'm sure you can afford it for the sake of your beloved daughter. Well then, call me when you get the money. If you get me seven hundred sixty-two thousand dollars, I'll take care of her or whatever. Sophia's dialysis treatment appears to have continued after that. However, she finally decided to quit her job. She made up her mind and told her fiance about her illness. I'm supposed to get a kidney from my mother, so don't tell me you're leaving me. She begged, saying that. But later, I received a call from his parents confirming the news. The president and his son, both of who have great potential, reacted admirably. Of course, I explained the whole truth to them. I made it clear to them that I had no intention of donating my kidney to her. Rumor has it that Sophia broke up with him shortly thereafter, and now she stays at home and blames her father and Nora. She only goes out for dialysis. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.